You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 15th of November and I'm Roland from Milford. US CPI was the key focus of last week, with the print smashing most estimates. Headline inflation grew 0.9% month on month and 6.25% year on year. This compared to consensus estimates of 5.8%. Energy continues to be an issue, increasing 4.8% month on month and 30% for the year. Food is also grinding higher, increasing 0.9% month on month, the same rate of growth experienced in September. Backing out these quote-unquote non-core volatile metrics, core inflation grew 0.6% month-on-month, taking full-year inflation to 4.6%, the highest level since 1990, and ahead of 4.3% expected. We take this one step further and back out more transitory items such as airline tickets. This metric also is grinding higher, growing 0.4% month-on-month and 2.65% year-on-year. Now this is much stickier inflation. This still yields at the short to mid end of the curve increase week on week as more pressure mounts on the US Federal Reserve who remain firmly in the transitory inflation camp. Now the US aren't alone in this. China's October PPI came in at a 26 year high and Germany's October CPI was also at a 28 year high. Domestically, Aussie employment data was released which was a bit softer than expected with total employed falling 46,000 versus expectations of a 50,000 increase. The unemployment rate also came in much higher than expected at 5.2% compared to estimates of 4.8%. Now October was a strange month given the various levels of lockdowns across the country so we would look at it with a grain of salt and I'd focus on seek job ad data which is at record highs pointing to a strong recovery in employment over the next few months. Broad credit growth in China, which had been declining, leveled off in October, and there are some signs that Chinese policy is turning more supportive as they respond to strains in the property sector. This has alleviated some market concerns that China would not stimulate and that growth would continue to grind lower. Although this may still be the case, the credit data this week was taken well by the market. Finally, UK GDP data was released, coming in slightly below market estimates at 6.6% for the year versus 6.8% expected. Turning to equity news, US reporting season continues to wind down, and it was a strong one, with the average EPS beating estimates by 9%. Unsurprisingly, energy stocks had the strongest quarter relative to expectations, beating estimates by 23% on average. Now, the 9% beat was largely driven by strong operating margins, given sales only actually beat by 2%. Now despite this, guidance was a touch more conservative and hence December quarter earnings estimates haven't been increased. Interestingly, mentions of labour and supply chains on conference calls increased 250% and 360% respectively. This highlights the market's concern and focus on labour shortages and supply chain issues. Now, the better than expected credit data out of China saw some of the iron ore names globally rally, and domestically, Rio, BHP, and Champion Iron, for example, were all up between 5 and 10% on Thursday and Friday. Now, it's been a busy period for the IPO market in Australia, but it's most certainly slowing, with Comfort Delco and Health Engine, the latest two potentials to be scrapped this week, and Ventia looking less likely. In addition, APM Human Services listed and had a relatively tough debut, falling 6%. On a more positive note, SiteMinder had a very strong first week, increasing 38.5% on the day of listing and 40% for the week. Sydney Airport entered into a scheme implementation agreement as the board finally recommended the bid after the consortium increased their price to $8.75 per share. This compares to the original bid of $8.25. Now this is not a done deal yet as you still require a range of approvals such as ACCC. Finally, Playtech, the UK-listed company Aristocrat Leisure is hoping to acquire, was approached by Gopher Investments, who are apparently interested in lobbying a competing bid. The Playtech share price closed at six British pounds and thirty-five pence versus Aristocrat's bid of six pounds and eighty pence. The complication Aristocrat faces is that Gopher is the firm who are going to buy the financial arm of Playtech, and Aristocrat's acquisition was conditional on the sale of that financial arm. Therefore, this hands a lot of negotiating power to Gopher, who own approximately 5% of Playtech. Looking to the week ahead, it's a little bit light in terms of macro news flow. However, we do get a lot of inflation data, with core inflation to be released for UK, the EU, Canada and Japan. In Australia, we are currently in the middle of AGM season. What was once a relatively uneventful period has become increasingly important and we would expect a number of trading updates and potential updates to guidance or even giving guidance for the first time. 
These will be very closely followed given the volatile operating environment many businesses find themselves in. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.